The Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Well, welcome everyone to One Touch Ministries. My name is Pastor Shannon Young, and this is my beautiful wife, Prophetess. <laughs> I'm prophetess. Prophetess. Oh, okay. The yes. Young. Hey, listen. As you can see, you got a very different background and you know very very different view because we're doing something special today. Um, as you all know that this is our Love and Family Month yes. and today we are having some very special guests with us on today. So tell them who we got. Well, mm -hmm. my friends and my family, uh -huh. Minister Madeline Heilig and Minister Brian Heilig. Yes. yes. Our mentors <laughs> and our family. Yes. yes. And I say that they are the reason why we are still married today Praise because I'm telling you Ooh. through the marriage counseling through many things that they have <laughs> encouraged us with and you know hey just being there for us as being family That's right. and so we want to say welcome guys yeah. welcome um, to One Touch Ministry broadcast and I'm so glad that you all um, actually hey accepted the invitation well, thank Our you pleasure. for having us. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, introduce yourselves. Um, you know, tell us how long you guys been married, um, and how has life journey been through marriage? All right. My name is Brian Heilig, uh, Minister Brian Heilig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have been married for 19 years, Madeline and I. Um, had a previous marriage, uh, coming on, yeah, uh, coming on 19 years, pretty yeah. close here. Mm -hmm. um, I had a previous marriage with two children, a boy and a girl, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we can talk more about that. My name is Madeline Heilig, <laughs> and like Brian said, we've been married for almost 19 years, and June will be married for 19 years. Um, I was also previously married with two children, um, and the journey has been great, hard, and um, it's it's been good. It's been good. Lots good. of growth, lots of change, lots of healing. It's been good. Wow. That's amazing because you really just opened right into my question and what I was getting ready to ask. <laughs> Whew, my goodness. So my first question to you guys is, how does... It feel how do you guys maneuver being a blended family because you have two children you have children and it's like you guys brought your families together how do you guys deal with that so um, Madeline's children were already grown and my children were young mm -hmm. so that's also the blended part of it thankfully we didn't have teenagers Mm. So it did help that the children were young and it, it young enough that they could form a bond with Madeline. Mm -hmm. um, how do we deal with it? We um, uh, trust each other, protect, and and try to make sure that we're um, everything is in in proper order. What I mean is, um, I had to learn. You know, my I, I'm very laid back. Um, very non-confrontational, can't we all get along, can't we all just be happy? Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, who was bringing my children and was, was being a, a stepmother to my children, mm -hmm. um, I had to learn, you know, she didn't want to be the wicked stepmother, you know? Wow. And so I had to learn yeah. to step up a lot. Wow. That's amazing. I like that. Like, you had to learn how to step up, but you didn't want your wife to be painted as that wicked stepmother. Yeah. And she wasn't going to have it. 
because I know Madeline. She wasn't going to have that. <laughs> no kind of way. But that That's actually. More yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am not going to be the one to step I, I am, I'm not. She yeah. put that down, okay? Mm-hmm. I like that. Well, because we are sort of like a blended family. Um, yes. I do have a child. Y'all know that. And, you know, having Shannon, like, step into our world was mm-hmm. sort of difficult. Um, but then again, not difficult. And not as bad as I thought. Because him and Sierra became like the best of friends. Mm. And I became the wicked stepmother. <laughs> <laughs> I became the wicked step. No, really, because like when I would chastise her, he always has to find the upside. But I don't believe she meant it that way. I don't think she, you know, said it that way. Yeah. And I'm like, but that's what I heard, you know. And when I get ready to say something about him, she's like, Mom, I don't believe Daddy said it like that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what happened to anybody being on my side? So mm-hmm. I, I've watched you guys for the last, what, four and a half years, five years almost. Mm-hmm. And I've watched the love that you guys have for your children. I love yes. that. I mean, you don't take sides. Like you said earlier, you trust one another. You trust your, each other's opinion. And mm-hmm. and that's a lot right there. Mm-hmm. Trust. So so one of my questions is that I actually just thought of is that, you know, because um well, because I was Brandon's youth pastor, so mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I actually got a chance to Brandon. Yes. <laughs> You guys are son Brandon. So there so there have been some conflicts that has come between, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, one parent versus another parent. Yeah. So what what did you find or how did you guys find the easiest way to I guess conflict resolution when Ooh, it came to I like that, that question. High five. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just to say uh, there were times that I did feel like the wicked stepmother and I think that comes along sometimes with just being coming from that blended family but uh, we had to work through that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yes just like Shannon says there were issues because with a blended family you're being raised uh, by two separate people and Mm -hmm. for us you know I raised my boys but Brian's kids were more being raised by their mom and Mm -hmm. Brian just had the kids, you know Christmas Mm -hmm. the summer so there was a difference there so um, so it was all parties involved Mm -hmm. Um, we We had to learn that I Was different in my personality and he was different in his personality in the way of the approach with the kids Mm -hmm. and one thing we learned is that um, Brian had to step up and take his role as the father and the man of the house and that we loved each other you know and we probably there was a time that it was difficult in our relationship because of the kids and we had to go get our own counseling Mm -hmm. because it was it was difficult and the one thing that we learned through it all was that um, we just needed to love each other. Yeah. And that that's what the kids needed to see was our stability, mm-hmm. us loving each other, us being one. And when we did that, then things started to change with Brandy. You know, teenage, when you had him, he was a preteen and yes. to teenage years and that, you know, you deal with all the rebelliousness and everything. Yes. Um, and Brandon felt that when I would tell him things, it was just to keep him busy and he would get upset and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. But through it all, they were awesome kids. And um, yeah, and so once... But I have to tell you that um, Madeline was so artful and masterful at navigating that those complex situations. Wow. By the time he was already a young teenager... He saw Madeline as his his mother. Yeah. The, the the connection was there. He respected Madeline tremendously, um, and so and and you know so she it it took time to build that up, and so she couldn't day one come and say you know your room is a, is a mess, pick, you know blah 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 pick up your clothes. That's what I had to do, mm-hmm. yeah. so that she could. So that the time could be there for her to 
um, get to the point where she could just, and now she's like, Brandon, get a haircut. Look at you. <laughs> yes. He's like, I know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and, and that took work. It took work. Mm -hmm. um, because at first, I was the one, your room is a mess. You got to do this. You got to, you know, do mm -hmm. laundry, do this, do that. And so that's why I felt like the wicked stepmom. Mm -hmm. And so once Brian stepped yeah. in and he saw a way I need to do this, so then the role shifted. And then Brian was the one, Brandon, it, clean your room. Yeah. So then I wasn't the one that was on top of him all the time. And then I was just being mom, you know, that's and nice. I still will correct and, and do things, but we were able to communicate and talk about things instead of me being the one that was pounding on him all the time. So Which even, though it was, even though it was against my nature, mm -hmm. I and knew that. that I had to um, come up to a level that was, it was really, really uncomfortable for me. I hated, to this day, I hate, um, you know, go take out the trash, right? Mm -hmm. what, why, why do you hate that? Um, I don't know. I don't like telling people what to do. I'm like, you should just know it. It's, it's, okay. I think it's yeah. just stubbornness in me. Okay. It's, uh, I would, actually, I'm, I'm much better at it, uh, at just being like, yeah. you know, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. But before, I would just, because when I was a kid, and my mom, and the way I was raised, and, she, mm -hmm. you know, and it would be like, you know, yeah. white family, this white, you know, <laughs> like, come on, it, no, it is. <laughs> Sweetie, yes. remember, if you don't take out the trash, it's going to pile up, and it's going to stink, and blah, 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 you know, and, we right. need to be explained mm -hmm. and everything. And no, you just need to be, because I said so. so. Oh, yeah. right. yes. And I, that's not the way I was raised. So that's I, why I have, yeah. I think that's why I had a hard time. And that's what came up in the counseling. So the biggest wow. thing was that I came from a very structured home. Gotcha. And Brian came from no structure. Gotcha. So between us, uh -huh. structure and no structure, structure, then we were colliding all the time. Yeah, we uh, should mention, speaking about blended family, she's also Puerto Rican. And I, <laughs> yes. In case you didn't yes. notice. Exactly. But, but you guys, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, you guys are, shouldn't point out the race. No, you, you, really, you, you have to because yeah. black families, they tell us, Mamas be like, um, if you don't take that trash out, I'm going to tear you up. And it's like, oh, okay, mom. All right, you know. But like you said, hey, your, your parents normally just explain to you right. why you need to take the trash sweetie. out. Yes, Mommy sweetie. Yeah. Mommy loves you. But we've seen those kind of things. Yeah. Yes. yes. Absolutely. So, but that's good that you guys mm -hmm. recognize, hey, structure and no structure. And it was a colliding thing, but you guys have, like, you evened everything out. Mm -hmm. Like, now you have a lot of structure. Yeah. And you've seen growth in yourself mm -hmm. yes. as a couple. So, speaking of counseling, you guys said you've received counseling, but you guys, on the flip token, are now counselors. You've mm -hmm. counseled a lot of people, but you've counseled us. In yes. our marriage, yes. I mean, from the moment that we said we liked each other, you yeah, guys were down on us. It, like. You guys were on us like <laughs> white on rice. Y'all was like, mm -mm, this ain't gonna work. That guy ain't gonna work. Y'all gonna have to get rid of this, get rid of it. We mm. was like, oh Lord, I think I cried. Every every weekend, yeah, right, 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 right here, here. and I was sitting like right here, yeah. and I cried every weekend because I've been married before, and I've never had anybody. Um, to some people, this may sound like, oh, they reprimanded you, but then again, it wasn't it. You guys chastised me. Yes, you mm -hmm. chastised me in a way that I had never received it before, and I wanted it. That's why I cried because I was being chastised and I knew I wanted to do better. I didn't know how, but God finally found people to help me. And yes. because I wanted it, that's what made me cry. Yeah. The I Bible love. says, do not despise the strong hand of a righteous man. It is like an anointing oil. Yeah. Wow. You guys really, Something you like guys that. anointed me because you guys brought balance to Nigeria because to everyone else, I was an angry person. I was like, I was loud. I was angry. She was frustrated, but nobody knew the pain that I carried. And it was like, you guys helped me to understand my pain. So in return, 
I didn't take my pain out on this man. And I gave this man a chance yes. to love me. And which I am so grateful that I did. And I love this dude. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you love me the way you do. <laughs> I, every day I say this no, to him. She does. Because no, seriously, she does. <laughs> I've never been loved like this before. Yeah. Like, I've never had anybody to make my lunch. That's awesome. I've never had anybody to call me, did you eat today? Okay, so why didn't you eat? Yep. Mm -hmm. Take your vitamins. Like he mm. packs my vitamins in a Ziploc bag. Like, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys raised him well. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, because I really feel that Brian Mallon really has been my family. Yeah. Because you know my family is all in Michigan. Yes. And so I don't have no immediate family here. Right. And Brian and Malin really took me in as their very own family. So, oh, yeah, I thank you guys. Yeah, we yeah. know you know each other, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Four, 15 years ish, right? Some, something Since like we've that, been yeah. here, 13 years. Yeah, going on yeah. 15 years. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so amazing. And I just hang right up on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I really consider, I was telling Shannon the other day, I said, you know, I've had people to pretend to be my family. I've had my real immediate family to walk away from me. I said, but Brian and Madeline have, I mean, through the highs and the lows and the arguments and through the cries, I said, they still be like, Daddy, you want to come over and eat dinner? Daddy, you want to hang out? And I'd be like, y'all still like me? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So you guys really show me what family is all about. Yes. I like that. Thank awesome. you. So with that being said, like, what are some of the, um, what are some of the things that you can encourage um, married couples, you know, people who's watching right now, to, especially during a pandemic and stuff like that, to help them come closer together. Ooh, I like that question. Um, Ooh. Yeah, just to be able to come closer together. So what what help you guys, I guess. Well, um it's to it's so funny together. to get closer together. So I in order to get closer together two people need to change like like we taught you right you come from different backgrounds with your own issues with your family's issues the way you were raised and that's what you bring to the table when you get married but mm -hmm. now you are one mm -hmm. and so now you have to come and bring all the good things so we bring all the good and all the bad but now we bring all the bad to god and then we need to change as individuals wow. in order to be able to uh, have unity and so the Bible says that iron sharpens iron right mm -hmm. so you know you rub up against each other and I, we have found it's the way you deal with what comes up the sparks that come up because sparks okay. are always gonna come up so it's how you deal with those sparks right and and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not it's a working through and um, what always resonates for me is um, we were, our premarital counsel came from uh, Brian's brother and his wife, Michael mm -hmm. and Rolinda. And so this has always resonated with me and with Brian is that he said one day, the day that you stop dying to yourself mm -hmm. is the day that your relationship dies. Wow. And that has always resonated with me. And it's so true. Because the, the truth of the matter is that there's been time in the relationship that you just want to say, you know what, even if you're Christians, flip you off, I'm mm -hmm. going the other way, right? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. our choice to make. But when you that's but when you love each other, especially in God, and one thing I was single for a long time before God brought me Brian, and one thing I told God from the very beginning when I got born again. I says, God, I messed it up all these years. Now I surrender it unto you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now when you bring me the man that you bring me, I'm not going to mess it up again. So I had to change, mm. right? And so then that took a lot of dying to myself, a lot, a lot of dying to, my, to the way I thought it should be. And I learned a lot of things about myself. And I learned a lot of things about being a woman. And communication, key number one. Mm, the communication, yes. and yes. even if it hurts, 
you know, just share, mm -hmm. just share. And, and you know, one of the things we used to make you laugh is like, I was the stubborn one, right? I would be like, I don't want to talk. I'm mad. I'm going to sit on it for two weeks. Leave uh -huh. me alone. But <laughs> well, what did you tell me I had to do? You have to wait. You have to come to each other and say, okay, yeah. give me a day. Mm -hmm. Give me right, a minute. Told me, always put a time limit on it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we used that one time. I think we had gotten into a hot argument. <laughs> and yes. I, I used my words. Yes. I said, Shannon, I said, I need time. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and said, I can deal with that. Yeah. Yes. And then he said, can you tell me how much time? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I said, give me to the end of the day or give, I think it was at the end of the day, the next day. The next day or something And like do you not know what you guys said that to me has blessed my entire life and blessed our marriage. But I also use it in my spiritual life as well. Because when things hit me in the spiritual realm, when it pertains to other ministries or other things that I'm doing with other people, mm -hmm. I God has given me that, that limit. He said, you got 24 hours to get rid of this. Or you have 48 hours mm -hmm. to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. And if you go beyond those two numbers, we have a problem. There's a problem with you, Deidre. It's not a problem with them. It's a problem with you. So mm -hmm. until you learn how to deal with 24 or 48, then you ain't going to be nothing. You can't be a possum nothing. Mm -hmm. Prophet is nothing. You's a prophet nobody. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite line. <laughs> so it is that we had to learn. And to yeah. talk and communicate even when we don't want to. You know, mm -hmm. even when we're angry. Because you get angry. Even when you just want to throw something at the other person. Because yeah. honestly, you do. It doesn't matter that you're a Christian. You know, these feelings and emotions come up. And, you know, as time goes by and there's... You get to know each other, those things don't happen anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it helps a lot that we like each other. Yeah. yeah. So wow. you know, we're both we're both working from home. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. I like Madeline. She's yes. funny, she's silly. And I guess for people that that are now stuck in the house together, yeah. you know, you ask what do you yeah, that was what, the question. Do, what yeah. do you yes. recommend? I would say so. That's a result, us liking each other is a result of 19 years of um, work. Wow. Right? And so I, I, my, I was thinking, well, you could say, yeah, oh, you're home, you should go out and, and communicate. But I, I imagine that there are, there are people, there are couples that are now stuck in the house with each other mm -hmm. and things are getting worse. Right. And so I, while, while she was talking, I'm like, yeah. I would say, use the time always th th there seems to be when you're when uh i'm not to, okay so we're home together we like each other we get along mm -hmm. if you're home and you're not getting along and you're arguing about because the pots and the pans are piling up again there's something behind it there's something underneath and so my encouragement to you would be to take this time now to find out what's going on and start the process of rebuilding and doing that work to rebuild that relationship it's not about the pots and the pans that are piling up there's there's hurts and things it could be i'm saying if you're at the point where you're home together and you're despising that person mm -hmm. and covid is causing you to be at each other's throats mm -hmm. it's not just because of the pots and the pans wow. right if you're it's at that level because of COVID. there's an issue period yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean uh, we get on each other's nerves, so we both work from home, and so we have a room we set up for our offices. But I'm not allowed to sit in there because he says that I'm loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why'd, you, why'd you have to add, he says I'm loud? I just said I'm loud. <laughs> Objectively. <laughs> I'm loud on the phone. I have a decibel like, meter in I the like, office. I like music in the background. I like to uh, listen to teachings she, while she I'm had, working. She takes calls. She always has it on speakerphone. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. And so, you know, That's he's I'm like. so well, he, we both loud. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> babe, you're too loud. And he likes it quiet, you mm -hmm. know. So, so we work at that. So, I, you know what I do? I just. I leave. I'll sit over here or I'll sit in the other room. Wow. You know, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we fight as couples. We fight over everything. And I learned a long time ago, especially being our second marriage, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and I remember again, it, it was mentioned, it told to us, we, we, you major on the, we major on the minors mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. 
But instead, we need to major on the big things and yeah. forget about the minor things. Yeah. So in my previous marriage, I would fight because he threw the socks on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, Brian, just pick up your socks instead of having a big fight over That's it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not majoring on the minors. We, we major on what's really major. Wow. You wow. know, and that has helped us through the years. Yeah. I, I, like I think we need to do a part two. Oh, we need to do a part two? <laughs> we need to do a part two. Well, listen, I, yeah. I really I really think we're going to cut it right here. Yeah. And then we're going to do a part two. And I think the part two is going to be um, a Facebook Live. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. But listen, our time is out. <laughs> so if you just so happen to go on Facebook and see, you know, That's another right. part of this interview, then, you know... Yeah, just enjoy. So, Brian and Mountain, thank you so much you guys so for much. doing this. And it was just so awesome. And hey, listen, tune in next week, um, next Friday at 1.30 p.m. And who knows, you may see Brian and Mountain again. God bless everybody. <laughs>